major health threat. This one in Toledo, Ohio, where everybody in the entire city has been told not to drink the water. Ohio's governor declaring a state of emergency. Did you know that the average person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water at home every single day? If there's a water emergency, will you be prepared? Panicked residents forming long lines throughout the day. We're here in a supermarket in Toledo. You can see the shelves empty where water once was. To stay safe and healthy during a crisis, you must have access to safe, clean water. Water which will not be available at your local grocery store. There's a mad dash on right now to stock up on supplies. The ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system is a must-have for every modern, independently-minded household. Protect your family's safety during an emergency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com today to purchase your ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system or call 1-888-253-3139. You're listening to The Alex Jones Show. Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. All right, final segment. I want to thank Frank, a physician, for holding for 30 minutes. Then we'll go to Jeff, who's been holding for an hour, a five rider. Uh, Frank, uh, your take on the Ebola situation. Medical doctors telling us they see what they believe is Ebola cases, and then people are disappearing. Uh, uh, great job, Mr. Mr. Jo Mr. Alex. Um, I would not be surprised uh, you know, at that, uh, but my take on it is I'm thinking that if this, uh, this virus, that if it was Ebola, is mutating, uh, you need to get samples if you're going to make a vaccine off of it uh, so you can have the latest and, and greatest. Uh, the other thing is I, I think I sent you a show a couple, a couple of weeks ago. I was also the, the family practice and hyperbaric physician, and I think I sent you some information regarding uh, something that came out actually last October in 2013 from a, a journal of virology where it said the heme oxygenase 1 uh, enzyme actually stopped uh, the Ebola virus replication. And, you know, I, I would say I've been a little bit consumed with this. And so, you know, with my interest in hyperbaric, since that is a subspecialty of mine, I actually found that if you put yourself in a chamber, you're actually, and this is all documented, this is research that's out there, I think your, your staff might have it. It shows that uh, if you go in a chamber, a hyperbaric chamber, you're actually upregulate your, heme, your uh, heme oxygenase 1. And, you know, well, absolutely. Ebola can't live in oxygen and things. And I'm no doctor like you, but I've seen the medical literature about with viruses and other things going in hyperbaric chambers. That's what the royal family and others do. They also put their blood through different systems with UV light and things. Uh, Joel Skousen's daughter couldn't get rid of MRSA, knocked it out for her. Uh, you know, I couldn't get rid of a chest cold. My dad couldn't. Uh, colloidal silver knocked it out. I mean, it worked. I mean, I went with the antibiotics first like a dummy. Uh, but um, it's just amazing. Thank you so much. Thanks for the call. Jeff in Indiana, you're on the air, a firefighter. What's your take on this? Uh, well, how you doing, Alex? Good, sir. Hey, I got, I got real quick. Uh, I kind of want to reiterate what the guy the, called earlier from the Bronx. Was he a firefighter or a policeman? Uh, I believe it was a firefighter. Yeah. Well, I worked for the Annapolis Fire Department half for 25 years, more than one of the biggest in the country, and we've had to... Very little training on this. The training that we have had on it is basically it was a 20 minute, uh, you know, computer training. Um, and you could tell that this training was sent right from the CDC because it said things like, you know, wash your hands, it's not airborne, um, it can only live on surfaces for a few minutes. We've been given zero equipment to deal with this. Um, the EMS aspect, the EMS department in Annapolis, they've actually given them some Tyvek suits and respirators, but they're giving the fire department nothing. And and the thing about the firefighters, we will be, we're going to encounter this way before the doctors and the nurses do, because most firefighters in the United States that are paid professional firefighters are also EMP. So 85% of what we do is EMS related, and we will have, we will be the first ones rolling in on this. And we were instructed in the training that it's not to be called Ebola, 
Um, we'll have to say it all there on the air. And I can't remember what they told us to, but that it's going to be this best. It's like a code 750 or something, but it's, it's not going to be, you know, we're not to say Ebola. So, but the problem is, you know, we could walk right. The way they dispatch things lots of times is not necessarily what you're going to because the people who are taking the phone calls don't pay attention or whatever. And we could walk right into this stuff and not even know it. Exactly. If they don't really know that this is a hazardous material, special caution at least, then people just walk right into it. Well, and, you know, I was also on the hazmat team for five years, and one of the most important things when you deal with any type of hazardous materials incident, which I consider, if it's true Ebola, to be hazardous material, oh, yeah. is the decontamination process, and when you take off your protective gear. You can't just put a suit on, walk in, deal with the patient, and then just take it off and forget about it. You know, when you come out of it, let's say... Uh, you know, a chlorine leak or, or an acid leak. They have yeah, a there's a huge down. event that goes on all around it, or you'll just catch it when you take the suit off or give it to others. Absolutely. That's why this is so incredible, is that just one patient can clog up a whole hospital. Thank you so much. We're out of time. Nightly News Tonight 7. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists, and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO.